so uh, we are starting with our section that is plato plato the first topic in your syllabus that is plato and about plato his period that starts from uh, 428 to 348 bc 428 to 348 bc and he is a greek philosopher and critic a greek philosopher and a critic and he is the disciple of socrates a disciple of socrates socrates and founder of platonist school of thought and academy i may write here in your chat box academy that is the first institution of higher learning in western world it is the first institution of higher learning in western world so the name of his institution that is very important that is plato's institution that is named as academy then aristotle was plato's student who was plato's student that is who was plato's student aristotle yes it is aristotle and which all are the notable works of uh, plato that is apology apology symposium symposium republic republic iron i o n iron and phaedrus p h a d e r u s phaedrus then now let us discuss what about the views of plato on art kalaye kurichulla platoide vikshanangal first one art is a mere imitation art is mere imitation i will give you one example that just imagine you are say boy or girl of 2 and 2 and a half year old and one person asks you to uh, draw the picture of a chair draw the picture of a chair how can you able to do that how can you able to do that how can you able to uh, draw the picture of a chair first what comes to your mind first what comes any idea hmm? the exact picture chair exact picture of the chair your idea comes first in your mind that mind how mind. that chair looks like and you are a very small kid your father or mother is nearby to you and they help him uh, you to draw the picture of the chair and after completed the drawing of the picture of this chair you can able to paint it isn't it so how many process you were going on in order to get the painted picture chair how many process you were going on 1 2 3 how many process that is three process very good three process so it means our days try is removed from reality that is in order to attain the painted picture chair uh, that child may have gone through a uh, free process so from that uh, we can able to conclude that first conclusion from plato side that is our days tries removed from reality and it is an imitation to it is an imitation to is it clear the first part or first view 
Ashwadi and Akhila, is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Then, coming to the next. Um, next view that Plato believed intellect and rational thoughts. They are superior to emotions. Intellect and uh, rational thought. So, art should result at always in the emotional arousal. Art resulted in the uh, emotional arousal and swayed people away from finding those ultimate truth. That means they always felt thoughts and uh, intellectual, rational thoughts and intellect are always superior. And so um, he always prefer, what he prefer, uh, the rulers and helpers of Plato's utopia are, are not mere administrators and military strategists, but they are always philosophers. They have a deep understanding to the true nature of things. Deep understanding. And Plato believed that the ultimate reality was available to the philosopher who saw things beyond illusion. And one has to reject falsehoods, misconceptions, and popular notions to know the ultimate truth. The ideal state is ruled by philosophers who have received the right type of education. So, what's the second point? Like, Plato Parana, the emotional and the emotional idol of Karingal, Vikara Paramai Karingal Kalla, importance of Kodakanda, then Allah superiority Kodakanda, Pinandana. Intellectual to la caring rational thinking of possible idea. So that's the way. So that is the second point. Then next point that is art leads to immorality. Art leads to immorality. Art leads to immorality. What is that means? Art leads to immorality. Eternity. Uh, uh, immorality. Immorality doesn't mean eternity. It means something that is not moral. Okay. So, um, while in, uh, sometimes I will give you an example that even if you uh, are a very innocent person, possessing a lot of good qualities in your mind, then I will ask you to enact the role of a villain in a drama. Role of villain in a drama. Then... What character change happened to you, will happen to you? How your character will be changed? How your character will be changed? Ma'am, can you please repeat it again? Sure, sure. Uh, if, even, if you are a, uh, even if you are a very innocent person, hmm? possessing good qualities, and I will ask you to enact, that means act, but to act the role of villain in a play. That much clear, Akhila? Yes, ma'am, fine, fine. Okay. Then what character change will happen? So we will imitate the uh, things that we, uh -huh. we start, start to yes, imitate that. Uh, we start to imitate. We start to imitate that evil nature. We 
start to imitate that evil nature and uh, so that uh, we can't be able to so that our nature that means our uh, goodness in our character that entirely changed so we changed from uh, a very nice person to a very evil person so again another plato he comes to the conclusion that poetry of greek poets such as homer showed gods and heroes with moral weakness and sometimes even with a savagery and plato said such examples would not result in the formation of any worthy character so in acting this place was harmful because in acting because in acting people gave up his own behavior and nature and adopted the uh, behavior of another character who is often immoral and has vices so art created a very moral degrading effect a very moral degrading effect nalla oru vyaktiye valare moshamaya oru vyaktiye aaki maatuvaanu aa oru korchu samayangal aanengil polum adheyathin tande character change varuvaanu appo plato ennu parayna aalu thane he is a very moralist very stringent in his character very strict personality so he doesn't accept all these things so coming to the fourth uh, view that is i will also give you one example that uh, did you hear about homer homer hmm? homer yes ma'am yes Uh, what's special about our homer he is a epic poet famous epic poet and what is epic what is epic a uh, epic poems that always portray the deeds the courageous deeds of the uh, military generals isn't it so but the thing is that even though our homer is a well known epic poet everybody knows him like that he is a very famous epic poet but the reality is that uh, he had not attended any wars in his life and he didn't want any um, any reputed uh, reputation from this fate but uh before everyone he is uh known as a famous epic poet so our plato he comes again to the conclusion that artist not only imitate the imperfect objects of the world but also pretend to know he or she has actually no understanding അപ്പൊ അറിവില്ലാത്ത പല കാര്യങ്ങൾ സത്യസന്ധമല്ലാത്ത പല കാര്യങ്ങളും കലാകാരന്മാർ വരച്ചു കാണിക്കുന്നുണ്ട് തങ്ങളുടെ കവിതകളിലാണെങ്കിലും തങ്ങളുടെ നോവൽസിലാണെങ്കിലും അവർ വരച്ചു കാണിക്കുന്നുണ്ട് അതുകൊണ്ട് തന്നെ കല എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ എന്താണെന്നാണ് അവർ പറയുന്നത് ആർട്ട് ഇസ് ആൻ അൺട്രൂത്ത്ഫുൾ റെപ്രസെന്റേഷൻ ഓഫ് റിയാലിറ്റി ആർട്ട് ഇസ് ആൻ അൺട്രൂത്ത്ഫുൾ റെപ്രസെന്റേഷൻ ഓഫ് റിയാലിറ്റി then plato concludes that there was no justified role for the poet the dramatist or the minstrel in his ideal state as they are all misrepresentatives of truth so dramatist ai kote minstrel ai kote avarku aarkum endilla ee oru ഐഡിയൽ സ്റ്റേറ്റില് സ്ഥാനമില്ല എന്നാ പറയുന്നത് അതോടൊപ്പം തന്നെ പ്ലേറ്റോയുടെ ഒരു ഫേമസ് പോയിന്റ് ആണ് ഓൾ പോയിന്റ് ആർ ലയേഴ്സ് 
അതുകൊണ്ട് തന്നെ അദ്ദേഹം പറയണെ ആ പോയിന്റ്സും ലയേഴ്സ് ആണ് ദാറ്റ് സോ ദാറ്റ് വി ഷുഡ് ബി ബാൻഡ് എത്ര പോയറ്റ് ഫ്രം ദിസ് ഐഡിയൽ സ്റ്റേറ്റ് ഓഫ് പോയിട്രി ഈ ഒരു പോയിട്രി എന്ന് പറയുന്ന ഒരു ഐഡിയൽ സ്റ്റേറ്റിൽ നിന്ന് എല്ലാവരെയും നമ്മൾ കളയണം so this all are about the views of plato on art so what about the first point there are no first point art is thrives remote from reality and it is an imitation so it's merely an imitation and it thrives remote from reality then what about the second point um uh what is that intellect uh, intellectual and the rational thoughts uh, isn't it yes it is yes. always superior to, to the emotional thoughts uh, it's always superior to emotional thoughts so uh, he prefer only the philosophers he prefer uh, only the uh, persons who is highly educated in this state of ideal state of poetry very good that coming to the third point uh, that i remember because i uh, misunderstood the word immortality uh, uh, to immorality the uh, art leads to immorality immorality yes art leads yeah, to but i thought that was uh, immortality that's why i um, that said that the thing means, that happened in the romantic age when it comes to the romantic age that word becomes more peculiar because Uh, in the romantic age all the poets they talk about this immortality yeah so art talking. leads to immortality here art yeah. leads to immortality Immorality. as per plato yes as per plato so uh, plato uh, says uh, in acting plays that was harmful because in an acting plays our real character gets entirely changed isn't it so yes uh, all the artist they should be banned from the ideal state of poetry then which is the last point it's the last point untruthful representation of reality is art is a untruthful representation of reality mm. that means homer first to think about the example of homer then you can able to write it uh, write that view so easily that means art is not only imitate art is an untruthful representation of reality that is because of homer a uh, well known epic poet uh, but he has not attained any or he has not won any uh, achievements yeah, in the achievements yeah, in so uh, that's about plato is it clear both of you so okay then coming to the next that is our aristotle 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 um, uh, that is the next topic in your syllabus i'm taking the topics according to the syllabus itself okay then aristotle he is the uh, disciple of plato disciple of plato and tutor to alexander the great tutor to alexander the great and he is the founder of l y c i u m lyceum school of thought and this temple dedicated to learning and this school is actually a temple in the previous years all modes of uh, learning were conducted in not at schools or universities or colleges that were all conducted in ashrams alle right? ashrams vedic type of studies they all are there with their gurus huh? not only the curriculum only but also all the extra curricular activities too 
so an extra skills will also be learned during that time was learned during that time so um so this uh, aristotle he also founded like um, a school like that lyceum it's a temple that is dedicated completely to learning and the things that they taught there were public meet uh, that there were logics logics were taught the physics were taught the zoology etc they they were used for assemblies gymnasium workout area etc then what about aristotle's poetics it's very important and famous work of aristotle is poetics poetics i may write here on your chat box please note down that poetics it's very important poetics totally 26 chapters included there 26 chapters it's a very longer thing that an essay example um than the essay of origin of species it is much more longer and it contains of 50 pages it's a treatise a essay column well that than a treatise not a treatise and there one to four chapters poetry discussed there poetry and 25th chapter also this poetry the topic poetry discussed there el motham 26 chapters und oro chapters lo vyathasthamaya karyangal discuss cheyidirikkunnathu first 1 to 6 la 1 to 4 la ana poetry discussion cheyidirikkunnathu adha 25th chapter lo poetry discussion aanu nadandirikkunnathu then 5th chapter Fifth chapter la comedy, epic, tragedy. Comedy, epic, tragedy. Then six to nineteen chapters la. Um, other than six to nineteen, that is a uh, totally included of fourteen chapters. അതിൽ പതിനാല് ചാപ്റ്റേഴ്സ് വരുന്നുണ്ട് സിക്സ് ടു നയൻറ്റീൻ ചാപ്റ്ററിൽ ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് എക്സ്ക്ലൂസീവ്ലി ഫോർ റാജഡി റാജഡിക്ക് വേണ്ടി മാത്രം ഉള്ളതാണ് ദൻ ട്വന്റി ട്വന്റി വൺ ട്വന്റി ടു ദീസ് ചാപ്റ്റേഴ്സ് ആർ ഫോർ പോയറ്റിക് ഡിക്ഷൻ അഗെയിൻ ട്വന്റി ത്രീ ട്വന്റി ഫോർ ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് ഫോർ epic poetry then 26 chapter comparison between epic and tragedy comparison between epic and tragedy so they just go through this chapter silently ungal just notes dictate cheyinnilla rendu verum yes miss so you may um, silently read and learn from the class itself so coming to the composition of poetry composition of poetry according to aristotle plato is an imitator plato is an imitator like painter or artist and poet imitates ideal things commonly believed things and historical elements as we all know that human beings have the or a human beings can able to imitate like any other animals alle namukku oru ഒരു ഡിഫറെന്റ് കേപ്പബിലിറ്റി അല്ലെ എബിലിറ്റി ആണ് അല്ലെ വി ക്യാൻ ഏബിൾ ടു കമ്മ്യൂണിക്കേറ്റ് ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് ദിങ് ദാറ്റ് ആ അവേഴ്സ് ആർ ഡിഫറെന്റ് ഡിഫറെന്റ് ഫ്രം 
those animals. So uh, it creates a pleasure, always a pleasure in each and every man because it's our it's a dignity, uh, it's our dignity. It makes us so superior. But he takes imitation in a positive way. Uh, just remember that our play too. He says that art is an imitation and he doesn't uh, like that way. He's totally against that. Art is only an imitation. But here our Aristotle, the thing is that uh, he, this Aristotle is the student of Plato. But he disagrees with the certain points of his master. Not totally agree uh, with all the factors. He uh, disagree with the factors. That is, imitation is a kind of instinct in every human being. In every human being, uh, this imitation is an instinct where a child learns his basic lesson from uh, environment, blood, etc. through imitation. So a poet or an artist is just a grown-up child indulged in imitation for the pleasure it affords. He is not completely agree with his master Plato as art is harmful. I already said Plato is harmful. But another natural instinct, harmony and rhythm by which they are creating metrical composition. So he prefers art is not art. Art is an imitation and it's a positive thing according to Aristotle. But for Plato, this imitation is a, a wrong thing. It's totally a disqualifying thing. Then, according to Plato, Aristotle, he regarded pleasure as least. That is, artist to please Aristotle. It is the opinion of Aristotle that artist is only to please. Then Plato says artist is only to teach. But he says a teaching will be there. And also um, this pleasure uh, giving will also be there. Then if we see a bird, if we see a bird, um, in a broken branch of tree, it evokes the beauty, feeling of beauty in us. But at the same time, a uh, broken branch reveals the harmful after effects of deforestation. At the same time, we enjoy the beauty of the creates in our mind uh, the harmful effects of deforestation. So, art gives us sensual pleasure and our teaches us moral 
lessons too. Art gives us sensual pleasure and art teaches us moral lessons too. And such art is superior to all others. So that is the second point. Then what about the third point? That is the emotional appeal of poetry. If we are seeing the characters weeping for small reasons, we too can't be able to restrain our emotions. We have our characters from serials. We have characters We too can't be able to restrain our emotions. Especially when we grandparents. We have our serials. We have our characters. 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 We have Pity and fear. So, what is meant by pity? But uh, what about our Plato? He agrees with this pity and fear or emotional side of poetry. Agree, Jain and Dairno? No. No. But our intellectual, only intellectual side and rational side. But here, our um, Play to Aristotle, he totally agree with this two qualities that is pity and fear. And according to Aristotle, what is meant by this pity? What is meant by pity? That means by seeing the Undeserved by seeing the undeserved sufferings of the hero. By seeing the undeserved sufferings of the hero. So what is meant by the pity and fear and all these points? Please learn. Please read it silently. Coming to the next point, that is catharsis. What is the meaning of catharsis? That is, uh, as I have already told you that the Aristotle, he agree with the two emotions, that is the pity and fear. And he says that it's okay to uh, arise this pity and fear. And he coined one term, that is, to channelize to the excessive pity and fear. Catharsis means uh, channelization of the excessive pity and fear. It becomes cleansed and purified. feelings the emotions and the feelings that you should have to uh, let it go. Let it, ah, let it be go. I already did it. That is the channelization of emotions. That is catharsis. And again, channelization, uh, the one term is that purgation or purification of emotions. That's very important. Purgation or purification of emotions. Purgation or purification of emotions. Purgations or purifications of emotions. That is catharsis. Then next point. What is meant by the definition of tragedy according to Aristotle? The tragedy the definition Aristotle Barine. Definition of tragedy. It's very important. That is tragedy is an uh, imitation of an action. Imitation of an action that is serious, 
complete and of certain magnitude in language embellished with the each kind of artistic ornament the several kinds of being found in separate parts of the play in the form of action not of narrative so pity and fear affecting the proper purgation of this emotions affecting the uh, proper purgation of this emotions so first thing imitation of an action that is serious what does it mean the serious the serious nu parayan karanam it means a tale of suffering pity and fear right the uh, pity and fear le right? tale of suffering pity and fear then next is complete what is meant by complete that is a sequential order must have an organic unity then in that a definition we have also seen certain magnitude in the certain magnitude nu parnyala that is reasonable length a reasonable length then easily remember artistic ornament enriched language rhythm harmony and so then in the form of action that is present through action not narrative then as an imitator poet can imitate two kinds of action in poetry rendu karyangalana avaru cheyyune endakya noble actions of good men noble actions of good men that is epic and tragedy and mean actions of bad men that is comedy and satire noble actions of good men and mean actions of bad men noble actions means epic and tragedy mean actions means comedy and satire comedy and the satire then let's we are going to discuss what all are the elements of tragedy elements of tragedy which all are the elements of tragedy that is plot first one plot you may write down plot and also write here plot then character is person what happen any doubts character then i may write here in the chat box you may please not down character then plot fiction song and spectacle and what is this plot what is this plot plot means it imitates action line. plot is a storyline ah storyline very ah it's a storyline okay. that characters imitate men thought imitates men's mental and emotional reaction to the circumstances in which they find themselves plot imitates action character imitates men thought imitates men's mental and emotional reaction the actions ini aanu end imitate cheynada plot story line kodalayittu parayna 
കഥാപാത്രങ്ങൾ എന്താ പറയണേ ഇമിറ്റേറ്റ് മെൻ അതുപോലെ തന്നെ തോട്ട്സ് ഇമിറ്റേറ്റ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് മെൻസ് മെന്റൽ ആൻഡ് ഇമോഷണൽ റിയാക്ഷൻ നെക്സ്റ്റ് ഈസ് വേർഡ്സ് ദർ ആർ ത്രീ എലമെന്റ്സ് ആർ ദ ഓബ്ജെക്ട് ഓഫ് ഇമിറ്റേഷൻ ഫസ്റ്റ് വൺ ഡിക്ഷൻ ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് വേർഡ്സ് സോങ് ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് artistic empire then again they said that plot is the soul of the poetry plot plot is the soul of the poetry and this plot consists of three main parts unity of action unity of place and unity of time you may note down those points unity of time unity of place and unity of action what is this unity of action should be done in a sequential order very good it should be done in a sequential order that means even if uh, one of them displaced or removed the all will be uh disturbed if one of that uh that um displaced then the all will be disturbed the next is unity of time tragedy is uh, that means a, a conformity between the time taken in reality and its representation on the stage time taken in reality and its representation on the stage unity of place it means conformity between the scenes of tragic event and the time taken by them to happen time taken by them to happen that is unity of time il parayna reality il ad etra matram time eduthu nadana oru karyaano aa adu stage il parumbulum egadesham aa oru time nodengilum chernu nilkanam adinode oru conformity pulartanam അല്ലാതെ ജീവിതത്തിൽ നടന്ന ഒരു കാര്യത്തിൽ കുറച്ച് സമയം നടന്നത് അവിടെ പോയിട്ട് വല്ലാതെ വലിച്ചു നീട്ടി പറയരുത് യൂണിറ്റി ഓഫ് പ്ലേസ് ട്രാജഡി ഷുഡ് എക്സസ് ഇൻ എ സിംഗിൾ ഫിസിക്കൽ ലൊക്കേഷൻ ഒരു സിംഗിൾ ഫിസിക്കൽ ലൊക്കേഷനിൽ വേണം അത് ചെയ്യാനായിട്ട് tragedy should exist in a single physical location so just go through the your notes that is about what is meant by this plot unity of action unity of time unity of place everything please go through a good tragic plot angane aanengil endana or good tragic plot inu vendathu endakke aarikkam ningal onnu parni endakke aanu or good tragic plot inu what all things you should have it has to be into a fashion into a time and into a place it should be should be done in a good way idu ellathum koodite undavanallo or plot avundo ee unkis ellathum koodite adu koodi cherna ellaru nalla plot avu ായിരുന്നു <laughs> 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 പറഞ്ഞാൽ ശരിയാണ് നമുക്കൊരു പ്ലോട്ട് അതായത് ഒരു ഗുഡ് ട്രാജിക് പ്ലോട്ട് വേണമെങ്കിൽ അവിടെ ഈവിൽ ക്യാരക്ടേഴ്സും വേണം അതോടൊപ്പം തന്നെ ഗുഡ് ക്യാരക്ടേഴ്സും വേണം ദ റീസൺ എന്താന്ന് വെച്ച് കഴിഞ്ഞാല് നമ്മൾ ഇഷ്ടപ്പെടുന്ന ഒരാൾക്ക് എന്തെങ്കിലും ഒരു വിഷമം വരുമ്പോഴല്ലേ നമുക്കൊരു വേദന ഉണ്ടാവുള്ളൂ അല്ല ഒരു വില്ലൻ ആയിട്ടുള്ള ഒരാൾക്ക് എന്തെങ്കിലും വേദന വന്നു കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ നമുക്ക് എന്തെങ്കിലും വിഷമം ഉണ്ടാവോ അവനങ്ങനെ കിട്ടട്ടെ എന്നുള്ള ഒരു ആറ്റിറ്റ്യൂഡിലാണ് അല്ലേ നമ്മള് സോ ഗുഡ് ട്രാജിക് പ്ലോട്ട് ഷുഡ് അറൌസ് പിറ്റി ആൻഡ് ഫിയോർ should arouse pity and fear and the change of fortune that should be from good to bad 
the change of fortune should be from good to bad pleasing and not may not provide a true a true tragic pleasure le pleasing aayittulla or end aanengil adinu oru tragic pleasure adu tharunnundo illa so pleasing end may not provide a true tragic pleasure the next is the elements of tragic plot show all are the elements of tragic plot that is i have write down here you may take the note that is compilation c o m p l i c a t i o n compilation complication oh sorry complication or so complication or rising action what does it mean what is that mean complication or rising action it should not be in a happy mood and i mean a rising end or read it all all the action from the beginning up to the point where it takes a turn ah egra kore adane where it takes a turn from good to evil le namukku ore kadhe eduthal ore kadhe edu eduthalum nada eduthalum evide anengilum ore turn undalle ore goodil ninnu eppozhum ore edhil inga povo nerathile parnja pole eppozhum nammal ore good character nu vechirunnu kenni ore kadha poorthi aavo illa so there is a point in which uh, it takes a turn for good or evil or ill that the point is called a complication or rising action complication or rising action the next point is denouement or write down the name of chat box denouement or falling action denouement or falling action that means extends from the at turning point to the end ni kadhayil endu venam or climax vendi namukku a extends from the turning point to the end that is the climax that is the climax that is denouement or falling action the first one complication or rising action please note down these two things which are the types of tragic plot that is first one simple plot simple plot what is the simple plot in their no puzzling situations no puzzling situations p u z d z l i n g no puzzling situations no peripecia then no anagnosis no anagnosis no a uh, not a good tragic plot i will explain to you what is meant by this peripecia anagnosis and uh, um, anagnosis peripecia i may write down here ketu pedikenda adu parayam peri shia p e t e i peripecia anagnosis anagnosis and what is meant by this peripecia peripecia means reversal of the situation reversal of the situation and what is that which means the reversal of the situation that means 
uh, did you um, read this novel Oedipus Tyrannus? Oedipus Tyrannus. I don't Oedipus Tyrannus. Yes, why shouldn't I? Padalenda Parene. Oedipus Tyrannus is a very innocent person and he himself has killed his own father. Le? Sondachana Kolla Jede. And married to his own mother Yokasta and brought the plague upon Thebes. Thebila plague on Duanu. Then next is anagnosis. What is meant by anagnosis? Anagnosis. That is recognition or discovery. Recognition or discovery. A sudden enlightenment about a strange fact. Very special situation change as a boja. That is a null every victi at the Jivichu. You don't know where the Sunda Achna Kolgi, Mami Kalyana Viki in Jedu. Adubari and I ah, fortune reverse a decay. The good fortune is in the bad like a boy. If it is anagnosis, no one is a pet on the carim, certain I do car within the teacher in the anagnosis. No one. There are great expectations in the novel. Great expectations. Great expectations means a great expectation novel. Rather than Miss Having Sham has been his secret benefactor. And it has peripatia and anagnosis. There are great expectations in the novel. Our Tarikin and Nanchenya have a sham on our day a benefactor and on a orthon did another. Akshay and then say they a Mac which I do no actual benefactor. Then what is the definition of a tragic hero? Tragic hero that is appropriate, true to life. Not be a perfect man, may commit mistake. A perfect man, I rikila mistakes will commit to in all I rikum good. Uh, uh, that means a good means of suffering can arouse pity and pure nalla and I rikum. Actually, you were through a reward a pressure of him very kind of in all I rikum. They consistent I rikum. Not be a bad man uh, who deserves bad fortunes. So, man who may make errors that leads to homosia or tragic flow. So, this is all about the tragic hero, definition of a tragic hero. And the last point that is homosia. What is meant by homosia? That is a fatal flow. That leading to the downfall of tragic hero. A fatal flaw. That leading to the downfall of a tragic hero. The best sort of tragic flaw is a man highly esteemed and prosperous. Who falls into misfortunes according or because of some serious hamosia. Example of the law. Hamarsha no arguing a little low. Ada or aunt Victi Vikalim of the Vending Paranam, the Lavalam Namade, the Urukurval and the like. Traposti and the Traposti attitude on in the Kiana or Yalam, Lavalam of the Vende the Aichuria, Kuraval and the Namala, a lecture on the Hanang and Shakespeare nor a works at the Emilam or the law. Alda in the Erno tragic flaw in the Erno act without thinking. Chindika the Pravartik, well, act without thinking. Then, which all are the reasons for Hamersia? That is misunderstanding, errors of judgment, ignorance, etc. Misunderstanding, errors of judgment, as well as ignorance, aga. Idella in the are reasons for Hamashiana or reasons for Hamashia.
So Plato discussed uh, distrusted emotion. Plato a uh, distrusted emotion and advocated its representation where Aristotle wanted the release of powerful emotions through art. Plato emotions in a distrust and advocated its repression while Aristotle want, wanted the release of powerful emotions. Like uh, powerful emotions in a release through art. So uh, you have to go through all the topic of Aristotle. No. Just go through the topic. All the important points, commercia, anagnosis, what is peripatia, everything is important. While they were asking uh, ask the question related to Aristotle, you should also write all these points. Can I ask you that? Yes, sure. Uh, simple plot. Um... Includes peripatia or not include peripatia? Not include. Not include. A complex thoughts include peripatia and agnosis, summation and, and all these things. For simple plot as it means simple, so no peripatia, not any bustling situations, nothing was it. Okay. But it, it is in a tragic mode. Yes. May not have That's a pleasing so. end. Yes. So is that okay? So what is meant by peripatia? What is anagnosis? Recognition. Next is P.B. Shelley. P.B. Shelley, he born to a wealthy family in Suffolk, England. 